Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be creating a persistent Linux USB drive. We'll be using Ubuntu for an example today, but this works across the board with most Linux distributions, so make sure to choose your favorite out. And to make things easy, the first thing we want to do is get something from the internet. So if you use your favorite web browser and you search for something called Rufus, you'll find this website here which is currently rufus.ie. Rufus is a tool or utility that helps you create bootable USB disks and makes it extremely easy to create a persistent USB drive. So this is what it looks like here. We're searching for the download section and here it is. It says Rufus 3.13. This is the latest release, November 20th, 2020. So that's what I'll click on and we'll begin the download. I'm gonna save my file and search for it in download. And after it's finished downloading, I'll go to my downloads folder where all my downloads save. And now I have Rufus 3.13. I'll go ahead and run this program and I'll be asked whether or not I want to allow this program to be ran by the administrator. Yes, I do. And if you're new and stopping by to watch this tutorial today, make sure to subscribe below and hit that notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. All right, the plan here is to go through this setup real quick and create our persistent Linux USB drive. Before we can do this, we'll need a ISO or an image off of one of the Linux distribution websites. Like I said, I'll be choosing Ubuntu desktop today, so I'm going with the 20.04 long-term support version. I'll click on that, download it real quick. Of course, you can use another Linux distribution if you're more interested in something else. All right. And back to Rufus here. First, I'll select what device I want to use. This is going to be the USB where you want to install your live image of Linux onto. So my live image is going to be the Ubuntu desktop image. And currently I have a no label device with 32 gigs available. What you want to do is if you highlight, it'll give you a little bit more information. So this says it's the verbatim store and go USB device, which is the correct device that I want to personally use here. The more storage you have, the more disk space your Linux distribution will have since it's only going to exist on this USB device. So I don't suggest going much under 32 gigs or you might run into issues real quick with the amount of storage space available. All right, if you click on here, you'll get a drop down. So make sure you select the proper USB drive in the list. You don't want to be overriding files if you have multiple USBs in your computer. I currently have two and I know the correct one is the 32 gigabyte no label for me. Make sure you have your proper one selected. And then the next option is the boot selection. So we said we are using an image today. So we have disk or image and that's the option that we want. This will create a bootable USB from an ISO image or disk file. And next to the right of that, I get to select that image that I want to flash onto my USB. So I selected Ubuntu 20.04.1, my desktop edition, the AMD 64 architecture here. So I'm going to select open. And now I get this option here that says persistent partition size. Here's where I get to specify how much of the USB I want to use for persistence. This means 27 gigs, since I maxed it out, out of the 32 gigs can be used for storage space on this USB by whatever Linux distribution you are deciding to flash onto this USB. Some space has to be taken up by the bootloader and the operating system. And that's about two gigs here for Ubuntu. Next, I'm going down to the partition scheme and you have two selections here a GPT partition scheme and an MVR partition scheme. Depending on if you have UEFI based BIOS, you'll want a GPT. If you have MVR or legacy based BIOS, you want MVR. Most modern computers nowadays use UEFI based BIOS, so you'll want the GPT partition scheme. But if you have an older system or motherboard, you might want to select the MVR. Make sure to check out your BIOS in order to confirm which one you need. I'm selecting GPT and the target system here is UEFI as mentioned before. I won't need the advanced options, so I'll keep going down. Now we get to name the volume label. 
I'm just calling this Ubuntu for now. You can call it whatever you'd like. I just don't like the long name that it gives it automatically. File system, we'll keep it default. The FAT32 is fine. The cluster size as well, 16 kilobytes, the default, that will work just fine as well. Leaving it as the default will work just fine. And we have this show or hide advanced format options. Let's make sure to open this up. Select the quick format, it will take a lot less time. Create an extended label and icon files, why not? Check for device bad blocks. This is nice to do, but does take a while to complete. So I don't suggest doing this unless you've already tried and noticed that you've been getting some bad blocks on your device before. And if you went ahead and made it this far, please smash that like button because we're getting ready to start the flash process. All right, so let's hit that start button. And we're being warned right now that all the data on the device that we selected, which for me is no label, the D drive with 32 gigs available will be destroyed. That means everything is wiped off this USB. As long as you have the proper one selected and nothing on it, we can click continue. I know that mine's all good, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. At this point, it's setting up and flashing the USB. This might take a little while, so I'm going to fast forward through this section. After this is all done flashing, what we'll do is boot into the BIOS of the computer with this USB inside the computer where we want to use it. The great thing about persistent USB disks is they're very handy because you can take them anywhere you go and use them in multiple computers. You're pretty much carrying around a storage disk anywhere you go and even in your pocket. This is a great thing if you're on the go. Just make sure you don't lose it because that means someone could pick up that USB and try using it themselves. This is probably one of the biggest drawbacks to using a persistent live USB. But other than that, it's great that it's portable. You might wanna let the system go ahead and do its thing for a little while. My complete formatting and flash took about 25 minutes on my computer. Here's my take longer. And if you see it get to 100%, while it's formatting, just let it go. It's not frozen, it's just finishing some stuff up. All right, and once you see the ready down here in green, you know that you've successfully flashed your Linux image and created a persistent drive. So let's close out of here and boot into BIOS. There's really two ways to do this. If you're going to try it out on the current computer that you have, you can go down to the search menu if you have Windows and search for boot. Here we'll see something that says related to the boot menu called change advanced startup options. Click on this and in the advanced startup, we can select restart now. Give it a few moments. We can choose the use a device option. Looking around here, I see my verbatim store and go 1100, which is the USB I use in order to flash the image on. So I can select this and the computer will restart. Otherwise, while you're restarting your computer, you'll be able to boot into your BIOS by spamming one of the F keys. All right, and on my computer, while I'm first booting up, there's a screen that tells me to either hit F2 or delete in order to get to my BIOS. So I'm gonna go ahead and spam that until I get into BIOS. And if I successfully got into my BIOS, I can see the screen here where it tells me that I have UEFI BIOS up in the left hand corner. The key to get into your BIOS might be something different, but we're looking for a screen similar to this. Now mine's a newer based UEFI BIOS, so I can use my mouse in here. And in mine, I can go ahead and select the boot menu by pressing the F8 key. And if I do that, I can see that I have a few options here. Well, the option I'm actually looking for is the UEFI verbatim store and go here for myself because that's the 32 gig USB I used in order to flash my image onto. So I know that's the proper one. Of course, yours might have a different amount of storage space, but instead of actually clicking onto this, I'm going to show you a different way which might look more like your own in order to change the boot order around. I'm going to do the advanced mode in my BIOS, which is F7. And then you might actually see a screen more similar to this one where you have various different tabs at the top the one we're looking for is something called boot or boot order. This will allow us to change the order around of what devices get booted and in what order. And we're looking for boot option number one to make sure that this is actually selected as the same USB that I had just got done flashing. So mine's right here. It's the 32 gigabyte verbatim store and go. I'm going to select this and now I can see that my boot order option number one is the UEFI 
USB that I just flashed my Linux image onto. All right, and one other thing I'll make sure is that Secure Boot and Fast Boot are disabled on my computer. So for mine, I select an OS type which automatically disables Secure Boot, but you'll wanna make sure to disable this because otherwise your computer may start Windows instead of other operating systems. After all that's done, I'm going to the, to the exit tab where I can go ahead and save my changes and restart the computer so it can restart into the installer of my Linux image. So I'm going to hit save changes and reset, confirm those changes and let things reboot. All right, and here when it gets into Grub, the bootloader, we have a few options here. We have the Ubuntu and the Ubuntu Safe Graphics option. Safe Graphics works for computers that require proprietary drivers in order to run their graphics. Like mine does, I have an Nvidia graphics card, so I'm selecting the Safe Graphics option. Otherwise, if you have something integrated or AMD, you can go with the Ubuntu option. I'm gonna let things load up real quick, and then we'll test out the persistent live image. We're getting really close here, so make sure to smash that like button if you haven't already. We can see things are being verified here by Ubuntu. All right, and here's my desktop. Since this is a live image, it does offer to install Ubuntu for you. I'm going to delete this, move to trash, because this is a persistent live USB at the moment. We can verify this by right-clicking and perhaps creating a new folder. I'm gonna call mine Savvy Nick, and then inside that folder, I'll create a new text file. So I'm going to put Savvy Nick was here, just to test the persistence here. I'm gonna make a save in the desktop in my Savvy Nick folder. Click save and verify that it's in there still. Great. So now what I can do is reboot my computer. And as long as the USB has remained persistent, this file and folder should still be here on the desktop. I'll do that real quick. Power off and restart. Give it a few moments. All right, things are loading back up for me here after the restart. All right, and I'm back on my desktop here. I see the folder Savvy Nick. I'm making sure there's something in it. Sure enough, Savvy Nick was here. Congratulations if you made it this far. You've successfully installed a persistent USB disk with Linux on it. Now you can do this with multiple different platforms, but since Linux is free and open source, it's about as good as you can get. Well, have fun using your persistent USB across multiple computers. Just make sure to select it from BIOS. And that's about it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.